Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Enjoy. Daft Punk are no more. The news arrives eight years following Random Access Memories, a retro-leaning record that pays homage to the past while still managing to sound fresh and exciting. Daft Punk have always managed to treat nostalgia as a weapon in their toolkit rather than solely clinging to the past or being grim over their future. Throughout their career, the electronic duo have been a bridge between the digital and the analog. Using electronic sounds alongside real instruments, they'd appeal to both the hardcore club scene as well as listeners who weren't even into electronic music to begin with, becoming many's personal gateway into the genre. They served as the representation of electronic music to the masses, merely because they were making simple, catchy, and easy-to-love pop tunes. In particular, their 2001 album Discovery would alter the perception of what electronic music could be. Beautifully written and crafted, yet fully capable of getting a dance floor moving. The duo proved an ability of invoking the same emotions in house as in any other kind of music. Combine that with their perfect marriage of genres, mystique, aesthetic, and technology, Daft Punk brought electronic dance music to the mainstream in a way that nobody has since. Let's unmask the album that defined Daft Punk's musical identity, Discovery. The electronic project began as the brainchild of two men, Thomas Bengalter and Guy Manuel de Homme Cristo. The pair's first foray into the world of music came with their failed punk rock project, Darling. Called daft punky thrash by a particularly abrasive critic, the duo rebranded themselves using that very critique and set out to prove that reviewer wrong. The criticism became their assignment, as Bangalter and Omem Cristo quickly began producing techno singles. After about five months, they'd compiled the tracks for the release of Homework. Featuring danceable singles like Around the World and Defunk, Homework changed how the world labeled dance music. Largely based around samples, filtered loops, and funky grooves, Daft Punk's brand of French house arrived alongside dance music's rising popularity. The huge European club scene, combined with major label support, allowed Homework to enter the top 10 of the UK albums charts, making Daft Punk the best-selling French act on the planet. With ravers and rockers now locked on them, Bengaltaire and Cristo return to their home studio Daft House to begin work on their anxiously awaited sophomore release, Discovery. One more time. Where homework featured tracks with a single sample or synth line over a house drum pattern, Discovery built a formula of layering a number of samples and taking further inspiration from 70s and 80s disco and funk. The bombastic danceable opener One More Time was the first track to be completed, and reorganizes a sample by Eddie Johns in a very interesting way. The second finished track would be The Closer Too Long, a track that wouldn't be out of place on their debut. With the album's bookends established, Daft Punk decided that this album wasn't just going to be 14 house tracks like Homework had been. Discovery would be much more polished and carried a synth-pop adjusted style, a decision that would surprise early fans. The two had the idea to capture the innocence of their childhood in their music projecting innocence and fun while avoiding overly judging or analyzing their arrangements. The loud, tolling church bells of Aerodynamic plunge the listener into a synth-heavy digital cathedral, later showing off a hard rock riff reminiscent of ACDC's string-tapping Thunderstruck. The third track on the album, Digital Love, opens with a sample of George Duke's I Love You More. Adding to the theme of innocence and childlike love, while also showing off the heavily vocoded vocals that would further cement Daft Punk's robotic image. Their 
Robotic Duo incorporate a lot of production tricks to make their tracks feel cybernetic too. Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger features a device called a noise gate, and Daft Punk uses it to further enforce that robotic feeling. <laughs> The drums are heavily gated, cutting off much earlier than an ungated drum kit would. It creates this illusion of a not-quite-human, not-quite-robotic drummer behind the kit. Departing from the upbeat, dance-heavy tone of the first five songs, we venture through some down-tempo and introspective tracks. Songs like Night Vision resembled 1970s balladry. This more reflective and intimate sound was completely new territory for Daft Punk. The track Something About Us is such an understated masterpiece when it comes to melody, harmony, timbre, and even songwriting. I love you. It acted as a glimpse into the duo's future, as their next two studio records would be filled with these kinds of cozier tracks. Of course, the second half of the album still has tracks that are unequivocally Daft Punk like the vocal sampling on Superheroes, Voyager's funk-inspired bass line, and the chopped-up production and vocals of Face to Face all scream Daft Punk. Released in March 2001, the album received generally positive reviews, receiving two Grammy nominations and charting in 14 countries around the globe. With its release, Daft Punk forged a path for French producers who would become much more recognized in the latter half of the 2000s. Modern EDM acts began donning masks inspired by the French robots, and their blending of genres saw the rock kids and the electronic kids playing nicely. Even hip hop couldn't resist jumping on the futuristic sample heavy train. Let's get lost tonight. You could be my black Kate Mouse tonight. Play secretary on the ball tonight. Wanting to lean even more into the inherent daftness of the album, the duo teamed up with one of their childhood heroes, animator Leiji Matsumoto, to create a film that would serve as a visual companion to the album. Their music truly had something for everyone, young and old. Beyond music, Daft Punk's discovery era began reshaping the way people consumed music. Every copy of the record came with a membership to Daft Club, an online forum where fans gained access to exclusive content. Taking advantage of the internet, the Daft Club established a direct connection between artist and fan. It laid the groundwork for independent artists, content creators, and services like SoundCloud and Patreon. 20 years on, Discovery is looked at as one of, if not the greatest collection of tracks from Daft Punk, and a gold standard in electronic music. It was immaculately produced, boundlessly creative, instantly catchy, and most importantly, incredibly fun. It connected music fans from across genres together, serving as the image of electronic music everywhere. Bengaltaire and Om Cristo followed Discovery with their 2005 release, Human After All. A two-year tour ended with the release of their epic live album, Alive 2007. And after producing the score of Disney's Tron Legacy, Daft Punk returned with random access memories. A love letter and celebration to music that saw them step away from their sample-heavy style in favor of collaborations with an array of artists across decades and genres of music. Mm -hmm. Following a few production credits, hype for another Daft Punk record remained. Until the announcement of their breakup on February 22nd, 2021. Sadly, after 28 years, Daft Punk are no more. Their perfect marriage of genres, mystique, aesthetic, and technology saw them change mainstream dance music in a way that nobody has since, or possibly ever will again. So to Daft Punk, thank you for the digital love and for giving life back to music.
If you've been following my channel for about the last year, you'll notice that my design skills have gotten much better. A lot of that comes from practicing or trying to emulate other designers and their work. But more recently, what's been inspiring my designs are actually user interfaces, websites. Where graphic design is usually a flat 2D image, today's web pages are living and dynamic designs. Rich Armstrong has a class on the basics of web design layout that covers positioning, depth management, margins, padding, and a ton of other new techniques that I wouldn't have really considered using before. You can try out the class by using the first link in the description below. Whether it's graphic or web design, animation, or even some audio production tips, Skillshare has always been a resource that's helped bring my skills to the next level. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for the creative and the curious. It's made specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new classes to help add to your personal toolkit. And it's less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription. But if you want to try Skillshare out beforehand, the first 1,000 middle eight viewers to use the link below can get a free trial of premium membership. So try it out, explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity with Skillshare. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like rating. If you loved it, share it with a friend, subscribe, and be sure to hit that bell so you're notified of when the next episode goes live. Support us on Patreon and follow us at More Middle Eight. Tell me, what's your favorite Daft Punk album? Let me know your pick in the comments below. But that's it for me. Again, thanks for watching and keep listening.